you very much, Pyra. Always nice to hear from Power of Evil. First time in the LCS, but we've heard from him at I Am San Jose already. I'm a fan. You're a fan. I'm, a, you know, I'm objective, but it was definitely nice no, to I'm see a them play. I could be you can certainly say that. Um, talk to me about picks and bans in this one. We had Thresh, Hecarim, Janna, Rexai, Sejuani, Zerath. Not the most uh, normal of ban faces. Yeah. So, so let's look, take a look at Gambit. They take away the Thresh from Hillisang. That's good. Then they mm -hmm. analyze in themselves. Okay, Janna's the second best champion. Let's take that away. Okay, but then you up for the Annie, which leads up to Leona as a counter pick. And in my opinion, a well, a Leona that plays well. And get, especially when you get the Grump advantage, should always beat an anime. And I think Hillisang could even min-max more in that matchup, being he could find a, a little few windows where he can actually abuse the matchup. But other than that, I really want to give props to Hillisang's Leona play. It was absolutely stellar. Once they started snowballing, he was making picks together, and especially in synergy with his teammates. Every time um, Power of Evil opened up with a stun, Hillisang would follow up, do predict Zenith Blades in the odd chance that there was... Uh, a Kassin going out, a Graves dashing out. That's why he was always predicting those Xenoblades forward. Basically, either they hit and the guy dies, or they don't hit and the guy dies anyways. And he was playing really well with that Leona, and I just want to give props for that. I really hope he trains it a little more in the in the lane. I think he could have killed Edward maybe once or twice, and then they ended up backing off uh, and basically getting their uh, their AD carry blown up. Yeah. But other than that, they did well. And that shows, you know, Gambit, you ban out two two supports, and you force him on a... On a uncomfortable champion and you, you end up losing the lane and that shouldn't happen. No, oh, well you do have a, a replay as well of that early phases of the game, uh, the bot lane dives. You know, let's get that up on the screen so we can take a look at that. You were saying the whole time, they should go in now, they should go in now. Yeah, basically before we roll the clip, I just want to highlight Edward's flashes down and that basically um, means that they can at any given point flash in uh, or just ult in with Leona. And it, we have Syndra coming down as well. So this is really good. Power of Evil is translating his advantage from the mid lane to the bot lane. He'll never kill Cass in 1v1, but he can roam. At the same time, I want to highlight that Gambit did well is communicate because they get the first TP down and Cass in follows. So let's roll the clip right now and we can see what happens. So they correctly identified Pinoy is only left under the tower. Edward's all the way out of position. Good job waiting for the LT before Graves dashes. Twist uh, Power of Evil comes in, but here is Kabushi with the TP, followed by Vizichashi. He's very close to going to Meganar. Good stun by Eddie, still like delaying the all-in because this buys him enough time and Vardox goes low enough for Kassin to pick up that return kill. So I just want to highlight that this is a play that was played well from both sides. I think Eddie backed off a little bit too far uh, initially. Uh, left Pinoy actually on his own. Pinoy did the right thing. You can dash mid stun from Leona and hopefully to dodge the ulti. Hilasang in return did the right thing by waiting for that mm -hmm. dash. Not missing his stun on the tower as some certain Krepo players do sometimes. <laughs> and then actually landing the ulti spot on and really good target calling. They knew Cassiopeia was coming so they didn't finish the dive. They waited for her to come, waited for the ulti, turn back again. I just want to give props to both teams here. This was a good play. Wow, so much praise for both teams. That's exactly. Really cool. <laughs> um, you also had something to say about Edward and picking people off with his vision control at some times in the game. Yeah, like I, I really respect Eddie as a support, but a couple of times he actually was really unlucky this game because 5.1 recently changed that wards survive a little longer. And it was really sad to see every time he placed the ward, just barely you, unicorns of love would pick that off with either an auto attack reset on Leona and then another hit. And it just it just shows that you unicorns of love are just working as a team. Like, they're, they're attacking wards together. They Even these small wins allow them to choke out the vision from Gambit and then create picks because of that. We have Leona opening first and Power of Evil following up. We have Power of Evil going up first, Leona following up. We have the tank presence of Nar and Jarvan, which is really, if you have this AoE uh, blow them up comp, it's really good to have this tank presence that can draw some attention mm -hmm. until somebody missteps. And that was, that was something Gambit was lacking. They had Cassidy to punish missteps. They had Annie to punish missteps. They had Cassio to punish missteps. But they didn't have any tank to really draw the attention, keep people in range for that to happen. And you saw really how, uh, how well Unicorns of Love uh, abuse that fact. Absolutely. We have actually one final replay where Unicorns of Love show that their synergy is on point. They know exactly when to go in. Let's get that up on the screen. Um, a lot, there was only one team fight I think they lost, but all the rest they executed. Yeah, well. in the end they actually got turned on by the Cassiopeia ult and they you can see how well they respect it, right? So they're at Dragon right now. We can roll the clip and they don't prior prioritize the objective. They basically use it as bait. They know Gambit's coming in, so they go on Diamond, they want to take him out, don't have the 50-50 smite, and look at Vizichachi, just flashes in, 
puts people in the in the wall. Hillsang follows up. Eddie doesn't even have time to use a stun. They back off to the dragon. Gambit is still being like lured in. They shouldn't like go for this anymore because they're but they're so desperate to land that money cast to PLT. But Nick overextends right now. You see, there is no tank drawing the aggro on Unicorn of Love. Sure, they land the four man cast to PLT, but it's too late because they have to invest too much HP to get close enough to make that happen. In a sense, sure, if they snowball, they can do that all game. But mm -hmm. if they ever get behind, their front line will just get blown up before they can even get in position to, in say, like use that wombo combo. Yeah, uh, for me, one thing coming into this one for the Unicorns of Love were some question marks. They have those oddball picks sometimes, but here it really shows that they have both the individual class and the team play, but it was only the first game, of course. Yeah, okay, this is game one, and we'll, we'll have to see whether this is all they have, whether they have more in mm -hmm. store, or they, whether they can come back from, from behind. But for me, they, they played well this game. Their draft was super, super well thought out. They had Nard Jarvan on first rotation. They answered the Annie pick with the Leona. They filled out Sivir and then they hovered the Oriana. That's actually the last thing I want to want to highlight is Oriana would have been great in this to comp like thematically, right? You have Nara and Jarvin going in and you can put the ball on them and then ulti. But then they were smart enough to think like we actually don't need that. We can just start making the the picks with the Syndra and then just have everybody else follow up instead of sending Jarvin and Nara in and then using the Oriana ulti. And you saw the, the little extra spice from the Syndra in the early game allowed them to snowball mid allowed them to roam and make picks left and right. So I like the switch that they didn't go for Ori and ended up playing Syndra, even though she's nerfed on 5.1. Yep, definitely worked out for them on that one. With the season fully underway, let's take a look at who raked in the most fantasy points today. The day one fantasy leader with 10 kills, a KDA of 22, and two double kills for a whopping 42 points in his LCS debut is Fnatic's mid laner, Feb Event. Great performance from him and from the entire team today. Yeah, he did really well. <laughs> uh, there's, great. there's actually not much to say about that. No, I, I really performance. actually just going back to the Fnatic game. No, you're not allowed to talk. No, okay, okay, <laughs> okay I'm done. Okay, I just said, we want to say Fnatic <laughs> played forward so well. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's the one thing. If you don't have a tank, everybody dove in, and the, people were wondering, is 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 uh, Fnatic going to get blown up on Zeref? No, he just stood back yep. and basically immediately launched every ulti every time Fnatic CC somebody. It was beautiful to see the way strategically uh, Fnatic played in that match. Yep. And as we wrap up the day, let's pull up the standings with five matches down in the 2015 spring split. Here is how the teams stack up. Half of the teams are tied with one win, while the rest have a loss each after the first day of the season. And uh, while well, looking at that table, the Copenhagen Wolves on top with Fnatic and Giants. And then at the bottom of the table, Meet Your Makers, H2K and Rocket. H2K will especially be beating themselves up, I think, after that one here today. Yeah, they definitely uh, basically threw the game, you know, they had a team fight comp composition that snowballed a little bit but they were actually better at split pushing than their adversaries and they should have basically kept the map open used those side lanes to get the victory but impressive that Copenhagen Wolves came back in that game yeah another big one was of course uh, elements suffering a defeat from Fnatic who played fantastically but that's all going to change tomorrow with five more games beginning with meet your makers versus SK and the new Fnatic will face off against H2K then we'll wrap up the week in Europe with the unicorns of love versus elements those matches all start at 6 p.m. Central European time that's 9 a.m. Pacific so don't miss it. And that is all for day one of the 2015 season here in Berlin. On behalf of myself, Crepo, and the entire broadcast crew, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Wow.